In MathCAD, you can perform data analysis like interpolation, which will allow you to predict the values in between the values of your experimental data. In this scenario, we're going to take a look at doing a cubic spline interpolation, which will end up creating what's called a cubic piecewise polynomial. In other words, a third order polynomial curve in between the points of our data. And speaking of our data, I have a matrix of my data. I've got two different columns. I've got my first column, which is my X values, and the second column, which is my Y values. Here I've used the matrix column operator to extract the X values, and here is the same thing for the Y values. And I've plotted the data on this chart component. I'm going to need a little additional space, so I'm going to select my chart component. And I'm going to move it down to the next sheet so I have some space to work. Let me scroll back up. In a previous video, I did a linear interpolation, which was a pretty straightforward process. It was just one function. In the cubic spline interpolation, it's going to be an additional step. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a variable for the C spline function that I am going to evaluate. Let me just give it my name. I'm going to call it my cubic spline vector. Yes, I use really long names. Then I will use my definition operator. Let me go to the operators drop down and then here's the definition operator, which is the keyboard shortcut of the colon key. And this is going to be equal to a function. I'll go to my functions tab and then expand all functions. And here we have the interpolation and prediction. And there are a few different choices that we have in here. In this video, we're going to start out by using the C spline function. And what this does is it evaluates your X values and your Y values, and it's going to return a vector. And that vector is going to contain the second derivative of a third order polynomial at each point in your data set. And there are a few different ways that you can do the interpolation besides using the C spline one. There's one that's similar for L spline, which is linear instead of cubic. There's also one which is P spline. This one is polynomial instead of cubic or linear. And some other ones, there's the B spline. This is going to return a B spline just like it sounds. One thing I have to note about the B-spline interpolation, though, is that the B-spline that you get might not actually pass through the points of your original data. And there's one other way to use this, and it's with a function called LOESS, L-O-E-S-S, -S, which is a localized polynomial regression, but it is not in this group of functions. But again, this video, we are doing a cubic spline interpolation. So I will double click on the C spline. And it's going to take in two different values. It'll take in the values of your X data and the values of your Y data. So I will type in the name of my matrix. Then we'll go to the matrices tables tab. And from the vector matrix operators, this command is the matrix column operator. The keyboard shortcut is control shift C. So I can click on that and my X data is the zero column. And then I will use my arrow key on the keyboard to move to the other placeholder. And this will be the Y data. This time I will use the keyboard shortcut control shift C. And this is going to be the one column. And if we want to see what this looks like, let's evaluate it. I will type in my really long variable name cubic spline vector. And this is going to be equal to, and again, this is going to give that second derivative at each point of a third order polynomial between each two points. So having that information, we're now able to use the interpolation function. And the interpolation function is going to take this vector that we just created, and then the original X data and the original Y data, and then the values that we want to evaluate at in order to 
get interpolated values. And so in order to evaluate it at a whole bunch of different numbers over this data, I'm going to create a range variable, just like we did in the linear interpolation video. So I will call this range variable range, and this is going to be equal to, we can go to the math tab, operators, definition operator, and we'll do the minimum of our x data. So I will use the min function. I just typed it in directly and then open parentheses and data. Then we can go to our matrices tables tab, vector matrix operators and use the matrix column operator to type in zero. And so it's going to find the minimum of all the x values and then to create our range variable well, i can move my cursor over to the side if you go to the math tab and then operators down at the bottom we have a regular range variable but i'm going to use the step range variable in order to define a very small step and so the very small step is going to be the minimum of the x data plus a very small value and so I'll do minimum of the data matrix and then control shift C and type in zero. And then let's move our cursor to the right. And I'm going to add in a small value, 0 0.01. And then this will go all the way up to the max of the X values. Let's type in the max function and then open parentheses data. Oops, misspelled it data and if you can't remember the keyboard shortcut, matrices, tables, vector matrix operators, and it's the second one for the matrix column operator, and it's going to be the max of our X values, which are in the zero column. All right, now that we have our range variable set up, now we are going to use that interpolation function called interp. And so I will type in, another really long variable name, which I will regret in a moment, my cubic spline interpolation. And this is going to be equal to, I can go to the math tab, operators, definition operator. And this time we are using the interp function, which again can take the outputs of either C spline, L spline, P spline, B spline, Lois, or even the regress function, which I did not mention. And again, there are four different values that we have to pass to it. Let me double click on interp in order to paste it onto the sheet. The first one will be the vector that we created initially. So let me type in cubic spline vector. And then I'll use my arrow key on the keyboard to cursor over to the second placeholder. Then we'll pass our X data. So I'll do data. Control shift C zero. Next, we're going to pass in our Y data. So that's data control shift C and I'll grab the one column. And then the last placeholder, we're going to put in the name of the range variable that we just created. And let me click on the outside of it. Oops, I made a mistake. This is supposed to be a function. Let me use the parentheses here and type in range and then click, let me move it over a little bit just so it's completely on my sheet. Yeah, so we need to evaluate at the different values of the range function. Okay, so this is good. Now let's plot our cubic spline interpolation. Let me expand the chart component inputs. Let me make it a little longer. And then I will, now let's click about over here. Just give myself some space. Oops. Let's right click and insert another X axis expression. And this will be equal to range right now. Everything's like really close to each other. Let me select this one and just move it down a little bit. And then our other Y values. Let me right click, insert a Y axis expression. And what was that name of that really long function? I wrote cubic spline interpolation cubic spline interpolation over range and let's scroll down let's click on the outside and you can see the curve passing through there 
let me double click on my chart component because I like this to appear in a different color. Let's use a nice blue color and let's make the thickness even bigger. So that's good. Let me close out of my chart component. Let me collapse the inputs area. And there you can see the cubic spline interpolation between the different values. And we can even evaluate at different values. So for example, E, it's one of our constants. That's equal to 2.781. If we want to evaluate at a value of E, which is probably around here, let's type in the name of the function. This is where I really regret using such long variable names, but I'm just going to copy and paste from now on. Cubic spline interpolation of E is equal to, and we can see that it's 15 and some change. Let me select this, right mouse click and copy, and then I will paste it and then paste it once more, just so I can evaluate it a couple different times. And let's change this to evaluate at a value of, let's do 4.75, like in the other video. And we see that at 6.901. And let's change this to evaluate at 18.015. And this is going to be equal to 42.627. So that's how you can use the cubic spline interpolation to plot on a graph and also to evaluate at distinct values in between your data set.